same old mainline fields and dipping wires. It's new to the kids, of course, but you know it all by heart. No point, no one even looking. Back to the latest crisis. Who's this, though, next door? What's this behind him? Seems to be following the train's movements. And he seems to be looking out for all the mob posts. And the machine's taking note of them. You don't notice a few bumps and lurches so long as you get there. But they're all being put down on paper. You take the rails for granted. But all the time they're being tested in one way or another. And every year we change around 1,800 miles of them for new ones. This time we're going to use a special relaying crane. And this is where I come into the picture. Whenever we want to relay a length of track by this method, we have to measure all the old sections very exactly before they can prefab the new ones and bring them along. It's like ordering a new suit. Give them all your bodies, dents and bulges, and the backroom boys will do the rest. First of all, we make sure the joint is square at the start of the length we're going to relay. This sets us off on the right foot before we measure the rails from end to end, one by one. We mark the start with a white cross. On a curve, of course, the inside rail gains a lead over the outside one, and we measure this lead as well as the total length of the rails. They're usually 60 foot long. We number each section, and as the wagons of new track will carry six each, I group the old ones in sixes in my notebook. This chap with me is a local inspector. He and I will work very closely together throughout the job. Sometimes we find the sleepers shorter than usual or differently spaced out because of some obstacle, like a drain. And I make a special note of these variations in the book. If we go over a bridge, we keep the joints well clear of it to avoid too much vibration. If we go under a bridge or through a station, we note that the new track here must be the same level as the old. All these details go in the book, and by the time we reach the end of the length we're going to relay, we've got a complete picture of what's wanted from end to end of it. Drains, bridges and platforms are all part of our picture, even if it's the standard 60-foot lengths of rail that make up the bulk of it. My next job is to take the notes and the measurements in my book to the drawing office. And there we copy them all onto a chart. As soon as the chart's complete, we cross-check the details of each section very closely. When we're sure the chart's thoroughly clear and accurate, we send it on to the depot that assembles the new track sections for us. This part of the job is entirely out of my hands. We've given them all the lengths and the special details they need. And if they follow these exactly and load up the new sections in the right order on the wagons, well, the actual relaying on Sunday when the line is closed for us ought to go like clockwork without a hitch.
they're off to early communion in the village when the train of new track comes chugging along backwards over the length we were measuring a week or two ago. First six old sections will go onto that empty wagon at the front, next to the engine. And the second six will go on the next wagon that's now got the first six new ones, and so on. First of all, we drop off the guardsman on the last wagon of new track, just beyond the end of the length we're relaying. Then the train returns gradually to the start of the length, dropping off the wagons one by one at intervals of six rail lengths. The wagon that's got the first six new sections is left standing on old sections eight and seven, just clear of the first six old ones. The empty wagon is the last to go and takes up its place beside the cross we painted to mark the start of the job. We're all spaced out now and ready to begin. When the gang have taken the fish plates off the old track, the relaying crane can then lower its bells and start lifting out the sections. This is where the main part of my job begins. Number six is the first old section to be lifted, and the crane carries it back over five, four, three, two, one, and drops it onto the empty wagon. Forward we go again for number five. Back goes number five, over four, three, two, and one, and drops onto six on the wagon by the white cross. While the crane's lifting out four, three, two, and one, this chap we call in the scary fire, breaks up the ballast that lay under the old track and makes it ready for the new. He starts where the crane started, at number six. And when the crane has lifted number one and dropped it on two, three, four, five, and six on the wagon, the scary fire can finish his first run and return again. The ground is now ready for the new track. And the crane runs forward to the first full wagon. The crane lifts off new track number one and carries it back to the start of the length we're relaying. When each new section is down, a ganger puts expansion pieces on the ends of it, so that when the next one arrives, there's the right amount of gap between them. They're joined together with fish plates. Everything's going smoothly and sweetly, and that's the way we like it. All the details have been taken care of at the depot, 
And now section after section is coming along like clockwork and going down in his turn. Number six is the last to come off the wagon on eight and seven. And when it's down in its place, the first complete wagon load of new sections will have replaced their opposite numbers of old. There'll be a small gap between the end of the new and the next lot of old to give us a bit of elbow room. While the crane runs forward to lift out the next lot of old track, we put a bridge between number six new track and number seven old. Number 12 old section now. The crane carries it back over 11, 10, and 9, and drops it onto the wagon on 8 and 7 that carried the first six new ones. While the crane's lifting out 11, 10, and 9, the local inspector and his gang align the first six new ones and tighten up the fish boats. There goes old track number nine, out of 10, 11, and 12. But the wagon itself is standing on eight and seven, so we can't lift out these two until we've hitched the wagon to the crane and pulled it over the temporary bridging piece onto new sections six and five. Then we take out the bridging piece again and lift all sections eight and seven onto the wagon. When the scarifier has done his stuff, the groan's all ready for the cycle to repeat itself with new track section number seven. And we carry on as before with each group of six sections from one wagon load to the next. When we come to the drain, the new sleepers have been cut short like the old ones, so the track fits totally around it. And when we come to the first bridge, the rail joints fall clear of it, just as the old ones did. When the old track comes out from under the second bridge, the ballast is opened up and the new track goes in at the same level. Time's getting on, but the job's nearly done. We run the wagons of old track along the new track and couple them together. And finally, we come to the last new section of all. This is the right number of sleepers on it, but to make sure it fits exactly, we measure it on the spot and then cut the rails accordingly. Wagon at the back, next to the guard span, is now the empty one. And as the train load of old track moves off over the new, they're setting out for even sun, and another sun is over. On Monday morning, the old track is unloaded and sorted out at the depot, and the empty wagons go rolling forward again, ready for next Sunday's work to be assembled and loaded. And while they're assembling next Sunday's new sections, I'm out on the job again, somewhere else, collecting all the facts and figures for the Sunday after and the Sunday after that. And about the middle of the week, we can take out the speed limit on the length we've relayed, and once more, you and the kids and the crises can all go rushing by. <laughs>